What is going on everybody? Welcome back to DevSubs. In this video, we have an exciting topic to dive into. So, by the way, new studio. Hope you guys love the way it looks. I personally do love it much more. But today we're gonna be talking about roadmaps. Now, when you're someone just getting into programming and you have no idea where you wanna start or what you wanna do or you have no clue what even roadmap you wanna go down in program because there's so many out there and it can be so overwhelming, it, it, it can really mess with your head. And so in this video, we're gonna dive into some of the most popular roadmaps. We're gonna be going into the languages you need to learn. And this entire video is gonna be the simplest way put. We're not gonna go too, too in depth. That way you know exactly where you need to start and what you need to do. So let's dive in. So like I said, we're not gonna cover every single roadmap because there's so many out there. And guys, I made this whole thing, put some time into it. Leave a comment down below and subscribe if you love this video. Thank you guys so much. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna be looking at front-end web development, back-end web development, game development, we're gonna look at machine learning, Android development, and iOS development. Now, like I said before, these are the roadmaps that are actually you know, you know, popular. These are the roadmaps that people you know, are more apt to get into, especially when they're looking to make careers in software engineering and, and just coding in general. So let's go first into web development. Now, I'm picking web development first because if you're someone who just knows, I wanna learn code, and you don't know anything about that. You don't know, you know, what that looks like. You don't know, you know, anything about the languages, the careers, things along those lines. If you're someone who just says, I want to learn how to code and I want to make money, web development is the best route for you, specifically front-end development. So that's what we're getting into right now. So front-end development, you're starting with the essentials, right? HTML and CSS. These are your building blocks for a website, for anything that you're, if you look under the hood of any website on web, right now you're going to see html and css html is like the foundational you know it's your it's your you know if you're building a, a house it's 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 the two by fours it's the frame everything along those lines it's a foundation it's the roof and things like that css is your styling so this is what makes the site look pretty that way you don't just have a crappy html looking website css is what makes the website look nice and it's what makes your house look nice right this is the color on the walls this is you know what kind of floors do we want do we want hardwood do we want carpet things like that now we're going to move into the language and this is you know going to a house analogy this is the functionality of the house just like this is the functionality of your website right so this is the running water the ac this is everything that makes a website a website so once you learn the essentials you're going to be spending a lot of time in javascript and then we have to move on to a framework now frameworks are really important because they work almost as libraries that make the development process a lot easier so react the reason i put react here because there are other frameworks you can do as many side quests as you want once you're you know proficient in programming but like i said we want to make this very simple especially for people just starting out so the reason i picked react is because it's in such high demand uh you're more apt to get a react developer job than you are to get a job using angular for example and also the learning curve is a lot less steeper than it would be learning angular for example so React, so this is your front-end developer roadmap. Now let's transition over to back-end development. Now, back-end development, you're gonna have to have a server-side language. Now this is that way you can communicate from both front-end to back-end, you need a server-side language, and the most popular one that is used in the industry is Node.js. Node.js is the way to go. Next, you're gonna need a database. We recommend MySQL because that's the database we use and that's what the industry is really calling for. This is what we use to teach hundreds of students at DevSoaps Academy. And then you want your meta framework, which is Next.js. So before you even touch back in, let's say you're someone wanting to get into web development, because if we zoom out a little bit, boom, this is all full stack web development. All of this combined is full stack web development. Now, before you even touch back in, if you're someone you know looking to get a career fast in programming, like we talked about before, and you want to go the web development route, you need to spend majority of your time in the front end first, mainly because no one's going to be hiring junior back end developers. And if you start learning back end and then try and transition over to front end, you're just prolonging the time it could take you to go out and land a job if that's what you're looking for. Now, if you're a hobbyist and you're just, you know, kind of fiddling around, by all means, start wherever you want. But understand it's going to be much harder to get a back end developer job first than it would be getting a front-end developer job, mainly because you're dealing with a lot of sensitive data within companies. And companies don't really want, you know, credit card information accidentally being leaked from a junior back-end developer. 
So zooming out a little bit, let's go into some different roadmaps. So we're branching away from web development for a second. We're gonna go into mobile development, specifically iOS development. Now iOS development, these paths, you know, web development can be very complex. There's a lot of things you can do in there. You can go a completely separate route with web development and learn PHP and Laravel, or you can learn, you know, Ruby on Rails. Either you can go so many different routes. But for for iOS and mobile development, the routes are pretty straightforward. Board. So for iOS development, you're going to need to learn the Xcode environment and the iOS you know, framework. You're going to need to understand how iOS apps work, how the environment works, and things along those lines. And then the primary language to be used in iOS development is Swift. And Swift is where you're going to be spending all your time. Right? It used to be Objective-C, now everything transitioned over to Swift. You don't really need to learn Objective-C. Maybe you have like a, a basic understanding of it, but Swift is where you're gonna spend majority of your time. And guys, you can make amazing money as an iOS developer. Salaries sit at $100,000 to $120,000 a year. You can make a lot of money as an iOS developer. Same with web development. That's why we recommend it for, for beginners because it's such an easy access to a high paying career and it's a much simpler learning curve and it's in high demand. For example, if you wanna be able to work from home, if you don't wanna to have to move you know, or relocate in order to get a job, web development's where you wanna be because iOS development and, and mobile development in general, you're gonna more than likely end up having to relocate to you know a more high-tech area where there where those apps are they like a lot of people in office so moving over to Android development the environment it's kind of the exact same the environment you're gonna learn is Android studio and your primary language is Kotlin now uh, the reason I have Java down here is because Java is used in a lot of Android systems and it's good to have a familiar understanding with Java but Kotlin is what everything is transitioning to so Colin is where you're going to be spending majority of your time if you want to go down the Android development route. Now, I didn't put cross-platform app development in here, but you know a good starting place for that, if that's something you're interested, is React Native and JavaScript, or you can go Flutter and Dart. And those routes are really give you a good understanding of cross-platform app development. Now, let's get into some more fun stuff. We're gonna talk about game development for a second. Game development is extremely popular, but let me just tell you a little bit about the industry before we get in. It is extremely difficult to land a job in game development, especially if you're looking to land a job in like a AAA game studio or things along those lines. It is extremely difficult to land a job in a AAA game studio. It's also a little bit difficult to land a job in indie game studios. It's a lot less difficult, but it's still gonna be hard. Game development is a hard field to make a career out of. I can put it that way in the simplest form. A lot of people get into game development because they're just strictly hobbyists and they wanna build their own game because building games is fun. And, and if that's you, I want you to pay very close attention because the best place for you to start is either with these two paths. Now, if you wanna just do a deep dive in, if you wanna just dive right into game development in the heart of where everything is, you're gonna to wanna to learn the Unreal Engine environment and you're gonna to wanna to learn the language C++. And this goes the same with if you want to test the waters with AAA game studios, um, C++ is what the industry would be calling for. And if you want something much more entry level, if you want something much more easier, start with the Unity environment and then learn C sharp. And that's game development pretty much wrapped up. The only notes I wanna put there is it is hard to make a career out of game development, it is hard. But it can be done, and these are the languages and this is where you wanna put your time in. Now, our last path that we're gonna dive into is machine learning. And this can be a fun for a lot of people because this kind of falls in with you know data science and having an understanding of you know AI and neural networks and things along those lines. So machine learning. Your primary language for someone starting, you can go, you know, you can learn other languages like R, for example, but your primary language is gonna be Python. And, and Python is a much easier language to learn. Uh, it kind of falls hand in hand with JavaScript, right? Python is a much easier language to learn and it's pretty versatile. You know, it's web applications use Python. Uh, for example, and, and, and Python is a very easy language to get into. So Python is gonna be the language you wanna stick with when it comes to machine learning. Now you're gonna need to transition into more of the data and having an understanding of where 
where data is, how you need to use it, and things like that. So you need to get familiar with the Pandas library. And then you want to get familiar with psychic learning. And this is to help you kind of visualize your data and things like that. And once you have an understanding of that, that's when you can move into deep learning with things like TensorFlow, which is prime, what's primarily used with artificial intelligence and things along those lines. So this is just kind of a really brief understanding of where to start with machine learning. Python, then you want to learn data, have an understanding of data visualization, and understand that with machine learning, there is a lot of math involved. Same that goes with you know artificial intelligence and neural networks. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of math involved. So you need to get familiar with those concepts. You need to get familiar with data structures and algorithms, and you need to have a solid understanding of the Python programming language and how to use the libraries. And yeah, guys, this is it. That's the end of this video. Like I said, I wanted to make this super simple for people who have an understanding of what they want to get into, but they don't know where to start because there's so many languages out there and someone can easily fall into the trap of like, you know what? I want to get into web development, but I'm going to learn PHP and Laravel. And then they're going to go to find that it's extremely hard to get a job with PHP and Laravel compared to what it would have been getting a job with front-end development with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and React. And so that's why I wanted to make this video to have you have a solid understanding what the industry is calling for and how you and what you need to learn in order to land a job thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope to see you guys in the next one let me know if you like this new studio leave a comment down below if you love this video and even your thoughts and opinions on what we just covered thank you guys so much can't wait to see the next one be sure to hit that subscribe button peace